Hi, I'm Josh Carving, and welcome to another Death Battle prediction video for the upcoming new season of Death Battle. Uh, but first, we'll go over um, Vegito versus Gogeta and my general thoughts on uh, season nine. Um, so to start with. Yeah, the finale ended up pretty much being exactly what a lot of people thought. The one that is canonically stated to be more powerful ended up winning. Surprise. Um, the fight itself was very... I mean, is it is it appropriate to say it was very Dragon Ball Z? Um, I didn't feel too much for it. The song was fairly cool. Um, but it was very, like... If you've seen a Dragon Ball fight, you've really seen this before. Um, and yeah, it just... Uh, it didn't... It, it was a bit of on the lower end of the season. It was especially kind of like... Almost, I want to say tone deaf. When they were like... Um, like, want to see something different during the fight. And I was like... Yes, I kind of do. And then they proceeded to do... Pretty much the exact same thing for the rest of the fight. Uh, the end of the fight was actually, I, I kind of liked that, where um, not the kill shot itself, but the fist bump at the end was actually pretty cool. I did like that. Um, yeah, that's kind of all my thoughts on it. I don't really have too much to say about it. It was a very, like, mid-finale, I guess, uh, serving one particular fan base and not many other people. But that was a cap off to what was otherwise a very good season of Death Battle. Um, it's one of those things where I kind of have to divide, like, to separate myself from my opinion on it. Because during the tail, the, the second half of the season, holy shit, there was so few fights for me there. Um... Like, I didn't have a tremendous amount of interest in a lot of the matchups, but there were a lot of fights that I looked at and went, yep, that's a matchup that's worth doing. Um, and the the standout, I would definitely say, is Sauron versus the Lich King. That fight was absolutely, like, top five. Um, just, like, almost everything of that episode was put together super well. Um, so I will definitely put that as the top mark on the season. Uh, but other than that, uh, there were a couple fights that kind of, like, uh, sneaked by. Like, I, I don't really get why a lot of people have this, like, vitriol, like, hatred for Asta versus Deku. It's fine. It's fun. I, I kind of like the fight. Um, I don't watch Black Clover, though, so I guess some people say that he was a little bit mischaractered, so fair enough on that front. As someone who doesn't particularly watch either one, though, it was entertaining, um, yeah, so then that's basically it. I would say that it still does rank under, uh, the prior season, season eight. Um, but I would probably say that it is the second best season, uh, from an, uh, from a more objective point of view with like my own subjectivity is going to probably drag it down a solid, like one or two more spots, but yeah, it's definitely a good one, and I very much look forward to seeing what we're going to get uh, with this coming one, because we already know a good number of episodes, actually. Um, we are going to be getting, so the one that we're going to talk about today, which is Ant-Man vs. Adam, we're going to get uh, the um, Chosen Undead from Dark Souls versus Dovahkiin from Skyrim. That's going to be a really, really interesting one. There's a lot of fucking crazy factors at play with their cosmologies that's gonna make that one very nuts uh then there is also um alex mercer versus cole mcgrath not a particularly good big debate but it's gonna be a good one uh and then the very toxic one that was so toxic that it literally got the discussion shut down on the discord server for it because it got that toxic which yeah oh boy um, so we'll talk about the one for now. We've got some good stuff lined up, but we'll focus on those when we get there. Otherwise, I won't have much to say about them when we get there. Uh, so for Ant-Man vs. Adam, this is one of those fights that, like, um, I feel like it's been asked for forever. People have been asking for this one for a very long time. Um, but I always kind of thought of it as, like, a people-like Ant-Man so who is the DC counterpart 
to Ant-Man. Um, a lot of Marvel vs. DC fights work that way, where you kind of just go, hey, who is the Marvel slash DC counterpart to blank? Um, it can lead to a lot of, like, literal who fights, but, um, but sometimes those can actually be good, because it fills you in on a bit more information about the characters. Like, potentially Booster Gold versus Cable just kind of came about as, who can we put against Cable? And then they went, hey, maybe Booster Gold. And lo and behold, he's probably one of my favorite DC characters now that I've kind of, like, taken more of a look into him through the fight. Um, so there is a point where that can be a very good thing. Um, from what I hear, a lot of people do actually like um, Adam when uh, they're like looking at his like comics and stuff like that. Uh, so this is going to definitely be good for uh, introducing a lot of people to the character. The main thing that I know him for is just being really, really shittily animated in uh, Injustice 2. So... Not going in with the best of impressions, but uh, if I recall, he has also, like, recreated universes, and um, both of these two get to the point where they just shatter any idea of reasonable physics. Uh, if I recall, Ant-Man has shrunk down so far that he was smaller than an idea, Okay, and Adam once avoided an attack that was uh, doing, like, existence erasure by shrinking down smaller than existence. So, okay, this is, um, from what I've seen a lot of people put it as, uh, the stats themselves are really not going to matter terribly much in this fight. Uh, they're both probably going to be put around the same level um, in both speed and power. Uh, so what it is going to come down to is more which one has kind of like absurdly bullshit abilities and things like that. Adam does have this like belt of like 600 tools so that he always has the perfect tool all the time, uh, which could be helpful, but it's a little bit more um, general than a specific ability that would be able to take someone down. I'm also curious throughout the comics of how many of those uh, tools have actually shown up, like if you could get a countdown of how many. Given how old the character actually is, I wouldn't be surprised if he's gotten almost all of them out. Um, so then we have Adam, which, or sorry, uh, Ant-Man. So one of the big things with him is, yes, you have your um, uh, pin particles being able to... Uh, make things get bigger and smaller and empower them when they are such. Um, so to the point where uh, he can potentially have this like army of ants that are all super powerful and capable of like fighting a bunch of like uh, like Thor level characters. So both of them are going to be very multiversal, but if you actually do equalize the stats, then one of them having a literal army of ants is going to be actually a pretty major factor. Um, because if they're being brought up to a level that, where they can harm people on Ant-Man's level, then there's no reason to specifically say that uh, Adam will be able to immediately deal with them. Uh, another big weakness that I have seen brought up is that a lot of uh, Adam's stuff is reliant on his belt. He loses a lot of capabilities if he does lose that. Which, that's a, definitely a, um, a weakness that Ant-Man does not have. And when the fight is actually being considered this close in terms of stats, those are the kinds of weaknesses that are going to make a big difference. Um, and then, now, this is one part that I truly do not understand, uh, because I didn't take too deep of a dive into it, but apparently Ant-Man can get up into these other conceptual universes, clusters of universes, I guess. Um, I think it was called the Over... the Over bleed or something and and then he can go down to one uh that's its opposite and apparently when ant-man brought someone up into the the first one they went insane within like instantly um and were like unable to do anything and uh even ant-man himself is not immune to this effect he just is better at resisting it um, so it stands to reason that that could actually be used as a possible win condition as well, is that if he just brings Adam up into that, um, if Adam hasn't specifically resisted, like, madness effects and things like that, 
Uh, it's possible that it could take him out. Uh, from what I have seen is that Ant-Man is a bit more researched than Adam is, and that could lead to a very um, surprise win situation where suddenly they're just going to pull out this comic scan from fucking 60 years ago where Adam did this exact thing that counters everything that Ant-Man has. That's just the nature of comics. It's kind of why I feel very sorry for the research team whenever they get a long-running Marvel and DC matchup is because they have so much to go over. Um, but honestly, uh, just based on the few advantages that I see that Ant-Man has over Adam, well, Adam doesn't actually have all that many things that specifically counter Ant-Man, um, I, I do lean a bit more towards Ant-Man in this regard. Um, it's the rare cosmic, uh, Marvel win, uh, over DC. Usually it goes street tiers, Marvel wins, cosmic tiers, uh, DC wins. So we'll see how that goes in this regard. And yeah, I honestly don't have too much to say other than I'm looking forward to this season. And I'll see you guys for the next one.